Hello, I'm Mahir Abbas from Dubai, the United Arab Emirates. I would like to thank the AIS channel for the kind invitation to participate as a faculty in this very important educational activity. Today, I've been tasked to speak about the plugs and the glues for anal rectal fistula. I have no financial disclosures to make. Now, anal fistula as a concept is something very simple. It's a tunnel that has two ends. One end is inside the anal canal usually, and the other one around the perianal skin. When it comes, however, to the treatment of anal fistula, it's really a very complex issue. It's a very delicate act where we're trying to balance multiple factors, including eradicating the disease, minimizing complication, and maintaining continence for the patient long-term. The goals of surgery as outcome is to obtain the highest healing rate possible while minimizing the complication for the patient and avoiding recurrence if it's all possible with maintaining good function. And these outcome measures are basically the byproduct of multiple factors, including patient-related factors such as age, gender, medical comorbidities, obesity, smoking, prior anal fistula surgery, Fistula-related characteristics, including is it a simple or a complex fistula? Does it involve significant amount of muscle? Is it one track or multiple track? And finally, surgeon-related factors as they pertain to the choice and timing of operation, and more importantly, the technical conduct of an individual operation chosen by the surgeon. We would love to have a formula where we can plug in these various factor, the patient-related factor, the fistula characteristic, and the type of intervention to try to predict the outcome in an individual uh, patient. Unfortunately, such formula does not exist. And therefore, we have tried in a broader uh, fashion to divide anal fistula operation into two main categories. Those that are sphincter preserving, such as the anal flap, the plug, the glues, the lasers, the waft, and the stem cell versus sphincter dividing, such as cutting seton, fistulotomy, fistulectomy, with or without anal muscle reconstruction. Now, when it comes to plugs and glues, uh, they've been introduced over two decades ago, initially the, the glue and eventually the plug. It was a very attractive proposition, the idea of just filling in the tunnel without any wounds, a providing a very fast recovery for the patient, a procedure that could be uh, reliable and reproducible by surgeon around the globe that was easy to teach and quick to perform. And this shows basically the fibrin glue, which was the original uh, procedure introduced for the glue, basically taking a clotting protein such as factor 13 and fibrinogen and mixing it with a catalyst of thrombin to uh, produce a plug which would be injected to the external fistulous opening until it reaches the internal opening. And some people kept the internal opening open. Some people suture the internal opening after the trimming, the excess of the plug which protruded through the anal canal. In terms of result, there were many published uh, studies, some reporting success rate in the 60 to 80 percent. But when you look at data from rep uh, reputable centers with large experiences with anal fistula, such as St. Mark's Hospital, success rate of fibrin glue was 14% at six months. And going across the Atlantic to Washington University in St. Louis, Jim Fleshman and his group reported their initial experience in DCR in 2004. And this success rate was at best 31%. And obviously, if you follow the patient longer, this success rate would go lower. This triggered the interest in exploring the role of other type of glue, such as bioglue used in cardiovascular surgery, which consists of bovine serum albumin and 10% glutaraldehyde, silicone glue, as well as some of the bone glue used during orthopedic surgery. So we have explored a variety of glue other than fibrin glue. And in this letter to the editor I published in DCR in 2008, I reported my initial experience with the bioglue in six patients from Los Angeles. All patients failed the procedure and there was a very high rate of septic complication. And I immediately abandoned the use of this procedure. So with a fibrin glue or other type of glue, it really did not pan out 
to be as successful as people would have hoped for. This basically ushered a new era looking at the anal fistula plug. Initially, the anal fistula plug started off uh, with a surgeon rolling a piece of bioprosthetic mesh into a cigar-like shape and introducing it into the anal fistula uh, tunnel and uh, suturing it on the uh, internal aspect with the hope that the fistula would heal. The first plug that came to market in the US was the Surgis's AFP uh, plug. And there was a lot of excitement when this came out. And as you see here from the study published in DCR, the year it was introduced, 2006, there was very little scientific data and the few publication that came out reported very high success rate in the 80 to 90%. But over the subsequent three years, you start seeing a much lower success rate with some series reaching the high teen in terms of success rate. And this is my own study combined with the data from the Mayo Clinic. I uh, put together the Los Angeles Kaiser Permanente data. And as you see here the, from the pie chart uh, diagram, the vast majority of patients did not heal. We had healing in approximately one in four patients but the majority of patients did not heal, and one in three patients developed septic complication after uh, doing the plug procedure. And moving on to the Cleveland Clinic uh, Florida uh, data, our host Stephen Wexner published his own experience with his group from Florida in 2009, and as you see here, the success rate was less than 15%. So you had data from the Mayo Clinic, Kaiser Permanente in Los Angeles, as well as the Cleveland Clinic, really reporting on a very low success rate. And I have personally abandoned the use of glues and plug for, for the last decade. After the surgeon's plug, there was interest to pursue this concept further. So Gore, which is a company known for its uh, prosthetic vascular graft, decided to make a fistula plug from a different type of material with the hope of improving on the result of the AFP surgeon's uh, plug. There was very minimal data initially. Some data suggested that this plug may be more successful in the AFP, but in the long run, it really did not pan out either. So why do uh, plug and glues fail? If you look at the concept, we're looking at introducing foreign material into an infected field, epithelialized tract that basically has a completely formed epithelial in an area of the body that is very dynamic, the anus which basically move with movements, sneezing, coughing, defecating, and, and walking, as well as getting up. And all of this lead to a very high expulsion rate of that uh, foreign material with dislodgement, infection, and eventually non-healing of the fistula. But many of the proponents of these minimally invasive uh, procedure uh, ask, you know, why, why not? It's a minimally invasive uh, procedure, and even if the success rate is low, why not try it first? I, I stopped doing it uh, because of the risk of uh, septic complication, which have been reported in our study with the Mayo Clinic, but many other studies. And typically, a patient, at best scenario, may not heal. Worst scenario, they form an abscess that require immediate drainage. And often when the plug or the glue would fail, we're committing the patient to two or more additional operation to drain the sepsis if it's an acute abscess with or without a seton and another attempt at the fistula closure. And this come with the cost of the healthcare system in terms of financial cost, cost of the surgeon, obviously, because we don't like to have failures and the cost to the patient in terms of more time and suffering. And with that, I would like to conclude my portion of this program. Thank you very much again for the invitation.